My father actually enjoyed writing. This is one of the things that uh, not every writer you know, can really say. But he got a, a great deal of pleasure out of it when he wasn't working. It's, it's sort of like uh, maybe you're a production painter. You know, maybe you work for an advertising agency. And then you go home and you, know, you, you, know, you, do, you do what you like. And that, in a sense, is what one of the outlets the the, uh, the letters provided for him. Uh, some of them are funny, some are parodies. As uh, two letters to me, one is a parody of uh, Lord Chesterfield's letters to his son, filled with sententious advice, advice, and uh, the other is a parody of uh, Nabokov. So there is there is an enormous playfulness that, that really has no outlet you know, in any other way. So he takes advantage of letters and uses the form uh, in, uh, you know, he uses it, um, uses letters for, you know, for, for, for a variety of purposes, all of which, you know, uh, is satisfy something in him, as well as things that need to be done. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a boon. Writing is uh, not something that really preoccupies him. There are letters that need to be written. Uh, the whimsical letters are written, you know, after he, you know, after he's you know, finished the day's work on, you know, on, on a screenplay. The uh, it's relaxation time. Uh, he was an enormously disciplined writer, so that's I mean, you just don't produce the amount carry on, you know, a, you know, a fight against the blacklist, maintain a correspondence with many people, uh, coordinate uh, strategies between various groups, uh, keep in touch with lawyers, <laughs> all of these things. So he is you know, a highly organized man uh, who is moving steadily, you know, and trying to move events steadily toward, you know, his desired end. My father was always available, in a sense. We never, we ne we tried never to, to interrupt him. But at uh, six o'clock, the working day ended. So that, and after that, you know, it was dinner. Uh, sometimes he'd watch TV. Um, but uh, it was if, you know, the, the work belonged in its place. And in fact, it didn't take place in the house. It took place in, you know, in a building that was adjacent to it. So, uh, there, was a, there wasn't a sense that he was isolated. In any family, what children learn is what to parent to go to for what purpose. And mostly, I tended to go to my mother, as, as did my sisters. As uh, children, we were fairly independent also. They, uh, I always had the feeling that, you know, these things are, these, these things I can handle. You know, I can, I can do this. And uh, certainly, my older sister did too, and my and my younger sister, and when she you know, became old enough to take care of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Me, 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 the uh, the, the adequate high school athlete. <laughs> the, uh, yes, I you know, uh, and my father came to essentially all the home games, uh, uh, of which I was unaware of. Uh, we certainly never we certainly never talked about it. So um, why he did, I'm really not you know whether he was you know there to you know to pick me up in, ca <laughs> in case I was injured. I have no idea because he seemed to have no interest in sports at all, and uh, I don't recall really ever talking with him about about uh, my activities. So it was the. Uh, the musical things he was much more, you know, much much more aware of, and uh, had some uh, had some interest in. Uh, among other things, I insist that he buy tickets, you know, to school shows and, that, and those kind of things. So, my father's novel Johnny Got His Gun, I think, has been uh, misunderstood deliberately or not. Uh, by various parties at, at different times and politically opposite, you know, uh, forces. People have considered it to be a pacifist novel, which of course it's not. 
what he is he doesn't say there is there is no war in which uh, a person should fight what he is really concerned with is that you should know what you're fighting for you should actually conceive of becoming like the main character Joe Bonham and living in that way uh, you should know you should understand the price of war the cost of war the destruction of war the randomness of war, the horror of everything concerned with it. And if at that time you decide that you are willing to fight a war or go to war, then you may. But you must understand all of this before. Don't, uh, don't believe in the headlines. Don't believe in, you know, that you're doing it for peace. Don't believe that you're doing it for justice. Don't believe you're doing it for these principles and words that politicians are putting in your mouth. Uh, Johnny Got His Gun, which is my father's anti-war novel, was published in 1939, just before World War II was um, declared in, 19, in September of 1939. It's published just, uh, I think, a week or two after uh, the German invasion of Poland. The by the time the United States joins the Second World War, which is in, on December 7, 1941, it's, uh, what is that, three years later? Uh, the war has expanded in many ways. And with the United States' involvement in it, uh, my father decides, along uh, with Lippincott, which was the publisher, to suspend publication for the duration of the war. Uh, this is a, this, he, he wasn't pressured to do this. He decides that it's you know that it's it's not a uh, it's not a th it's not a book that needs to go into a second edition or third edition whatever whatever that is at this time. There's time for it later. After the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and then Germany declared war upon the United States, my father uh, became uh, a supporter of World War II. As such, he and the publisher, Lippincott, thought that it might be best not to continue publi uh, the publication of Johnny Got His Gun into another edition, and that publication would be suspended until the war was over, at which point they could you know, publish the book again. This was simply you know, part, of, uh, part of joining the war, in a sense. Uh, we're just going to suspend this for now because we're in a position where we have been attacked and we, we, we need to respond in these ways. The, one of the things that was done in World War II was that copper and various other minerals were uh, gathered and melted and made into munitions. And that's what the plates of books were made of, copper. And uh, they were going to be bought by the government and then turned into munitions. And when my father learned of this, he bought the plates rather than have them uh, turned into, in, in, into artillery shells, which in a sense would be the ultimate irony. So for the next uh, number of years, wherever we went, he was lugging around the plates for Johnny Got His Gun which was uh, a, a good thing because in 1957 or 58, Lyle Stewart, who had a publishing house in New York, decided that he would like to republish Johnny, except that it would cost so much to, you know, to recreate the plates. My father said, it just so happens <laughs> that I've been carrying these plates around. So the publication, the republication of Johnny in the late 50s was due to the fact that he actually, not, not only the interest, but that he actually had the physical properties to make it possible with him. And from then uh, it went into, uh, into it, it's still published today. So once it was uh, republished in 1957 you know, until the present, uh, which is over 50, what is it, 59, 60 years later, it has been in continuous publication in, uh, with different forewords and introductions by different people. I suppose I, suppose I always knew about Johnny Got His Gun. It was simply there. Uh, there was a, um, an interesting, um, I don't know what you might call it, table decoration. It's a bronze open book 
that was presented by the National Booksellers Award as the you know, $2 cover book of the year. So I always, I always saw that, and there was a little plaque on the wall someplace. So I was aware of this. The, uh, I'm told that the book, is, that sections from the book are now read in, you know, in, uh, in high schools, for instance, or say nothing colleges. Uh, when I was growing up, that wasn't true at all. You, nothing by Dalton Trumbo was read anywhere in public, uh, especially not in, in a school district. The, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, anybody of, of Trumbo's politics would be read openly in a school um, was unheard of. Well, when my father seriously decided that he was going to try to do John and he got his gun as a film, and he had to grapple with you know, the ideas, how do you present it? And um, essentially, you have a, a character, your main character, and you must stay with him uh, for a good part of the time, is a, um, a multiple amputee who can't uh, see, can't speak, can't smell, can't hear. Uh, essentially, it's just a lump on a bed. And how do you deal with that? How do you how do you go in and out? How do you check that? How do you uh, handle it so that the audience isn't repelled by it? All of these are you know are questions that he worked out over a period of time. The movie that we see now that's preserved as on a DVD and as a um, on VHS um, is not my preferred cut of the film. Uh, it's shorter, it excludes some stories, and I think that in some ways it's confusing. I saw the Johnny Got His Gun in Ojai, where uh, my wife and I now live most of the time, at the Ojai Film Festival. And it has much more power than I recall it having. But I also missed the parts that had been cut uh, in the effort to make it more acceptable you know, to distributors. And that, uh, there, are, there are areas of the film that I would like to see, but I happen to know that they're there. One of the things that, were, uh, that was cut, if you are aware of the book, uh, are, is all the material that occurred uh, at the bakery where Joe Bonham worked before going into the service, uh, which he explains many other things about him. And so you don't have that background, that building of character. Now, today, I think uh, that would have stayed in because the you know, film styles change and uh, people recognize that you may need more for this kind of material than, than less. Uh, unfortunately, none of the film uh, remains, so you couldn't recut it and, uh, and present an original because that, that, that no, footage is lost. Uh, no, it's gone. <laughs> the, uh, 